I'm a neurologist. I've been a neurologist for uh, 25 years in practice, uh, five years of training, uh, both in psychiatry and neurology. Uh, my practice has been uh, quite variegated um, in regards to seeing everything uh, that's not good about the brain from uh, pediatri pediatric uh, conditions such as autism and developmental disorders, uh, all the way through to ALS, Parkinson's disease, uh, and Alzheimer's disease. Um, I recently had the uh, opportunity uh, to refocus my clinical practice primarily on ALS patients. Doctors can learn more from their patients than we can actually learn from them. And that's actually true. Uh, the first handful of patients that I had seen had complained of recurrent GI issues, uh, recurrent infections, uh, as well as exposure to mold, uh, which appeared to make their symptoms worse. Uh, at first, I kind of poo-pooed the idea. I didn't really think that uh, infections had anything to do with neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, but as I began to look at the research, I became more and more convinced uh, that, in fact, infections are uh, a primary comorbid or driver of pathology in the nervous system, including ALS. Uh, there's a, a, a growing interest and focus on personalized medicine. Uh, throughout the entire ecosystem of oncology, neurology, psychiatry, uh, and other fields of medicine, in which each person or patient is an N of one, meaning that uh, it's more important to establish uh, a therapeutic regimen that is based upon the specific biology uh, of that patient's condition. Uh, I think that otherwise we get into this uh, cookie cutter uh, concept that one size fits all. Uh, we know it's not true in ALS. I think the, the, the idea of nutraceuticals uh, should be as studied uh, and as appreciated as much as any pharmacological agent. Uh, that means understanding the source of the material that one is using uh, and have a very specific targeted rationale for which supplements one is prescribing for patients with ALS. There's a concept that, uh, that I've been studying called the SORET effect which means that key nutraceuticals are activated by light. So by taking uh, certain compounds in combination with light exposure, one can increase the potentiation uh, of these compounds, which are called flavonoids. Flavonoids are like curcumin, uh, green tea, uh, chlorophyll, uh, phycocyanines, which are from blue-green algae, uh, and even methyl B12 and iron. So the, the critical issue, I think, that, that all patients and their physicians need to recognize uh, are really the ABCs of medicine. We have to start with our basics. The first thing we learned in medical school uh, is airway, breathing, and circulation. Uh, and it was alarming to me to identify uh, that patients uh, with ALS are walking around with, with low oxygen saturation uh, and that uh, they're not understanding the vitality and the critical need uh, for oxygen therapy itself uh, in patients with ALS. So uh, one of the most critical elements uh, when I evaluate uh, a patient with ALS or any neurodegenerative disease for that matter is to understand the psychosocial uh, factors that either contribute to uh, going forward with improved health or to actually have the opposite effect uh, and actually uh, separate uh, ones from each other because of the severe stress uh, that this condition puts not only in patients, uh, but their families. Uh, I've always told uh, many of my former patients uh, with Alzheimer's disease, uh, as well as ALS, that the spouse is, the, is, the, is really the hidden victim. Uh, because to watch your loved one struggle with basic issues like being able to go to the bathroom by themselves or to get up and feed themselves are so enormously stressful that I think if we don't identify that through some type of compassionate care uh, liaison uh, that can actually ease the, the burden that the families experience when taking care of ALS patients uh, is something I think is critically important for the uh, ALS field to understand and hopefully be supported by everything ALS.